Hey, what's going on summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. My name is Crumbs and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the worst champions going into patch 1221. I think everyone in all ELOs can agree that sometimes it can be pretty hard to win a game of League of Legends. The game itself is so complicated and then you have to deal with trolls and toxic teammates on top of that. So why make things even harder on yourself by picking bad champions? Of course, playing something you find fun is important, but it can't really be that enjoyable to pick a D-tier champion that handicaps you before the game even starts, right? By avoiding the picks on this list, you're increasing the odds that you don't lose the game just by drafting poorly. And of course, we have other meta videos to show you the right picks to go with, so be sure to check those out after. Now let's get into it. We'll start things off in the top lane with Gragas. In theory, Gragas sounds really good as a top laner. He's a really strong laner, able to neutralize most foes, and can go on to build AP or straight tank. With no real lane counters and so much flexibility, you think he'd just fit into any composition. But in practice, it doesn't work out so well. He's just super outclassed by other champions in both of those categories. As AP, you eventually just get hard outscaled by most meta champions. AD juggernauts and bruisers just buy maw and suddenly you're useless. Gragas' bursty trading style just can't hang against the champions here. The only AP champions that do decently top are those that have good DPS over time, like Heimerdinger or Cassiopeia. As a tank, he's certainly a bit beefy, but he's really lackluster in teamfights. His ult isn't nearly as reliable as other tanks for an engage tool. It's a bit disruptive, but too slow to really make catches consistently. The only time he's really able to pick out an enemy carry is with Flash Up, and even then he has to be in range to E Flash R combo, and that's assuming there isn't a single ally around to help block you from reaching the target. Before we go any further, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24 seven just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over to ProGuides.com for some professional help now. And of course, we have Kennen. In the past, he was once an insanely strong top laner who could bully just about any laner and also be better in 5v5 teamfights. But those days are long gone. And now Kennen just ends up getting rolled in almost all matchups. There are maybe a couple where you can bully out a champion in the first few levels, but as with most other AP top laners, you very quickly fall off when your foe picks up items like Merktrez and Hexdrinker. Don't get me wrong, he's still a strong teamfighter, but if you're entirely unable to lane against an opponent in a side lane when fights aren't happening, that isn't really enough to be useful. Like Gragas, he really only works as a mid laner where the shorter lane and squishier champion pool works in his favor. Now for the jungle. The first champ I'll warn you against playing is Blitzcrank. Don't be baited by Riot's recent buffs to the jungle crank. His single target DPS is pretty good, but he still doesn't really have a way to deal with multi-target camps, making his pace super slow. This means that in games where you can't successfully chain gank and just snowball every lane super hard, farm heavy junglers are going to get way, way ahead of you. Once behind, you're never going to be able to 1v1 your foe again, meaning the only option is playing for picks. With someone like Skarner, you can do this super reliably since he has a point and click combo that can crowd control for several seconds. But with Blitz, you're still reliant on hitting your hook, a slowish, flashable projectile. As a support, fishing for catches is one thing, but when you're occupying the jungle slot, that could otherwise be filled by some mega carry like Shivana or Yi, or a more reliable tank like Ramus or Amumu, it's just a waste. While this off meta pick is flopping, there are plenty of successful cheese strategies out there. We've covered some in our shorts recently, but we'd love to hear more from you guys. Which brings us to today's question of the day. What's an off meta pick that you think is secretly super broken? Let us know your answers in the comment section below. Maybe you'll help each other find some winning picks for this end of season climb, or maybe we'll even feature some of your answers in our shorts. Now, let's get back on track. Our other jungler to avoid is of course, Lee Sin. This poor guy has been at the bottom of the jungle barrel for so long. I literally can't remember the last time he was even really viable. 
I mean, I know he's picked with decent success in pro play, but even at the very top of the ladder, he's been one of the lowest win rate junglers in the game for at least the last two seasons. The way Lee is supposed to work is you use his strong early game to try to get the whole map ahead. If you get fed, you can be a really strong mid-game carry, and as you start to fall off later, you become more of a supportive champion, either making picks with your ultimate or using it to peel for your carries. But due to his dominance in pro play for so long, Lee has been heavily nerfed, to the point that even doing okay early game is pretty hard. Other early game champions have quicker clears and better dueling, so you just can't really get your foot in the door. And against scaling picks, the uncoordinated solo queue environment makes it hard to close out a game before you're basically useless compared to your counterpart. Even being up a full item isn't enough to make Lee Sin seem even close to as good as Fiddlesticks in a mid or late game teamfight. Now for the mid lane, the first champion we'll look at is Azir. Again, this is another pick that has been really popular at Worlds, but should really never be picked in solo queue. He has a really shaky early game, and if your jungler doesn't hold your hand for the first 15 to 20 minutes of the game, you're probably not going to get very great results most of the time. As we've talked about plenty of times in our videos, laners that heavily rely on a jungler babysitting are never great picks in solo queue, since you really can't control what your teammates are doing. He does have super good scaling later in the game, but other hyper carries like Cassiopeia, Vagar, and Victor have a much easier time getting there and are generally just as good or even better in solo queue. Our second mid laner is Ryze. It really wouldn't be a list of the worst champions in the game without him. Ryze's kit is actually really good. It's basic, but it has wave clear, point and click CC, and low cooldown combos. But that's exactly what makes him so bad. This super consistent kit is way, way too popular in pro play, to the point that Riot has beaten him full into the ground with all the nerfs he's gotten over the years. Now, he's so undertuned that even at the highest level, he's struggling. He was one of the most popular picks in pro play during the earlier parts of this season, but his total win rate for the year is 47%. His recent buffs were at least a sign that Riot maybe cares to finally change his poor state. But so far, they've done nothing to actually salvage the situation. Moving things down to the bottom lane, we have one of the saddest champions in League's history, Zeri. On release, Zeri was absolutely insane, being one of the most 1v9 champions in League's history. She was obviously in need of some balance changes, and Riot did so well shifting her towards being an actual crit AD carry instead of being basically a hyperspeed juggernaut. I think she was actually in a good spot at this point. She was weak early, but did insane damage at 3 plus items, while still being squishy enough to punish her if she messed up. She was good in high elo, but ranged from meh to bad in the middle and lower ranks. If they were balancing around solo queue, they could have stopped there, and it would have been perfect. But again, due to her insane presence in pro play, she got nerfed again and again, until she ended up where she is now. Usually, when something like this happens, the champion is at least still a bit decent in high elo. But even in D2+, Zeri has about a 42% win rate. Another AD carry that has suffered pretty much the same fate as Zeri is Aphelios. At least in his case, he's still viable enough to be picked in pro play. But as far as solo queue goes, he feels next to unplayable. The thing is, as much as people like to make 200 years memes, Aphelios really hasn't been a problem for the vast majority of solo queue players to deal with. On launch, he was definitely beyond broken, but even after just one round of nerfs, his win rate was in the red at all levels of play below Master Tier. Even Diamond players were looking pretty average on him, and he's been nerfed a lot since then, to the point where even at the very top of the ladder, he's pretty much a troll pick. The problem with Aphelios is that he's not only hard to master for the one playing him, but the rest of your team has to understand how to play around him as well. And like I said earlier, you can't always control what your solo queue teammates are doing. And now rounding out the list with our supports, the first champion you'll never want to pick to avoid tilting your team is Yumi. I think it's pretty safe to say that Yumi is easily the most hated champion in the game. For the AD carry that has to lane against her, they basically have to play a 1v2 lane. She does next to nothing, with her heal making her go out of mana in just a few casts, and her poke not really adding up to much. 
the AD carry then gets bullied around, inevitably ends up behind in CS, and has to play catch up for the rest of the game. But it's just as anti-fun to play against Yumi. You get to bully her hard early, but you know you're on a timer right from the start. If the game goes on too long, she ends up becoming obnoxious to play against. If she does the Ludens build, she becomes an untargetable artillery mage, dealing huge chunks of damage to anyone she hits. Finishing things off, we have Lulu. Lulu was already in a pretty bad spot when Riot hit her with her last round of nerfs. It was honestly a bit of Rise syndrome. The reason for the nerfs was her popularity in pro play, but if you actually looked at her stats, she really didn't deserve that nerf at all. She had a high pick and ban rate, but her win rate was around 46% at the time up on the big stage. This is exactly why I've been saying that Riot needs a bit more of a human element to their balance design instead of so heavily leaning on certain metrics like robots. Well, that about wraps things up for our worst 10 champions on patch 1221. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on our meta guides and so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know an off meta pick you think is sleeper OP down in the comment section below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below, where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.